Hello and welcome to Live Lounge. Today we are looking at the big question, why does religion cause so many problems? Religion seems to be the cause of wars, division, conflict and troubles. Is this something that comes from following God? Or is religion something that we have made? To help us think about this question, we're going to start by handing over to Chris and Dan, who will read some Bible passages to us. The first reading today is taken from John 1. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. From the very beginning, the Word was with God. Through him God made all things, not one thing in all creation was made without him. The Word was the source of life, and this life brought light to people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on all people. The Word was in the world, and although God made the world through him, yet the world did not recognise him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believe in him, so he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The word became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. The second reading today is taken from John 17, verse 20 to 23. Jesus prays for all believers. My prayer is not for my disciples alone. I pray for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you have gave, that you gave me, that they may be as one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought into complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me, and have loved them even as you have loved me. We have just heard that the word, which means Jesus, is the light that came into the world and shines on all people. So let's celebrate this together as we sing the song, Light of the World.
how Mary will lead us in a time of prayer. As we join together in a time of prayer, I would like to use something I learned in Sunday school as a child, a teaspoon prayer. In recipes, the abbreviation for teaspoon is TSP. And a teaspoon prayer involves saying to God, thank you, sorry, and please, or TSP. Let us pray. Father God, Thank you for the fascinating world of nature that we see all around us. The spring blossom and flowers, the tiniest bird singing away up in a tree, the splendour of the night sky. We are constantly amazed at the way everything is linked and balanced, the way everything has its niche and purpose. And it is wonderful to realise that you have a special purpose for us humans, that you want to have a personal relationship with each one of us. Thank you that you have made this possible by the fact that Jesus died to pay the price for all our sins that would otherwise separate us from you, the Holy God. Thank you that you have done it all. You haven't just issued us with a list of religious rules that we would find impossible to stick to perfectly. How amazing that we can call you our Heavenly Father. You truly are a good, good Father. We are sorry for all the times that we turn away from that relationship with you. We think now of the times in the past week when we have said or done harmful things, or when we didn't say or do helpful things. Please help us to walk in your ways in the coming week. We want to pray for the countries around the world who are currently being hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Please give the medical staff stamina, wisdom and skill in helping their patients. And we pray that their leaders will make right decisions about funding treatment and facilitating the vaccine rollout. We also pray your blessing on all those who have found the past year challenging in whatever way. Please would you give them your special peace and prompt them to ask for help when they need it. We pray that in the coming week we would each know the special joy and peace that comes from knowing you, our Heavenly Father, and be loving and kind to one another. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Do you ever watch a film and halfway through have to pause it because neither of you can remember where you've seen that actor before? But you're certain you've watched a film recently with them in. Neither of you wants to be the first to cave because you're both 100% certain you know what film it is. But the only way to settle this argument is by turning to the almighty Google for the answer. Unfortunately, not all arguments can be answered by Google. In my research to this morning's big question, why does religion cause so many problems? Google was not helpful in the slightest and provided loads of conflicting opinions. But the simple answer to this question that we don't need Google for is because of people. People are the reason religion causes so many problems. Now bear with me a minute here. What I mean is that we have a tendency to disagree and not see other people's point of view. So in a sense, it's not religion in and of itself that causes the problems. Before we get into it, we also have to acknowledge that religion has also done a huge amount of good in the world, whether it's establishing education, healthcare provision, starting sports teams, working with the homeless, crisis relief, youth and family and children's work, food banks, soup kitchens, support for the homeless, to name but a few. But we can't hide the fact that religion does cause a huge amount of problems, and maybe you won't expect me to say that as I'm a Christian. However, it's not always the big ticket items, those big issues that cause the arguments. Within the church particularly, it can be things as silly as the colour of the chairs, the style of the music we use in worship, moving the piano from one side of the room to the other. The thing is, religion is a human invention. It's our attempt to search for God and put him in a box. We take one experience or passage from the Bible and build our whole belief system around it. This is what God is like, this is what he does, and anything outside of that is wrong. And when that's challenged, we fall out with people, we throw insults around, we marginalise or abuse people who are different to us, we fight, we force our views on others, 
and we commit atrocities in the name of God. But God's plan was never to start a religion, it was never to give us a bunch of rules, and Jesus certainly didn't come to earth, die and rise again just to start another religion. His actual plan is all about relationship, which can clearly be seen when you see the big story of God as revealed through the entire Bible. We see a God who creates us because he desires relationship, that when humankind turned away from him, it broke his heart. Like a good parent, he gave us rules and boundaries to keep us from harm and give us the best lives possible. We see a God who constantly reminds his people that they are to be an example to the world of what a relationship with him and each other should look like. We see a God who tries numerous times to speak to his people and warn them about the consequences of their actions if they turn their back on him. And we see a God who loves us so much that he sent his one and only son to live among us, or as the message version says, he moved into the neighbourhood to be with us, to do life with us and have a relationship with us. Not to give us more rules or to tell us we're getting it all wrong or to condemn us, but to show us the best way to live that is all centred around relationship with God and relationship with each other. Religion doesn't leave space for relationship. It focuses too much on the rules rather than who they point us towards. Religion is about having to get it right. Relationship is about recognising we get it wrong and we can't do it by ourselves. Religion is about keeping up appearances. Relationship is about honesty and authenticity. Religion divides, whereas relationship unites. So when people ask me if I'm religious, I tend to say no. To sum up, let's watch this video by Jefferson Bethke together. What if I told you Jesus came to abolish religion? What if I told you voting Republican really wasn't his mission? What if I told you Republican doesn't automatically mean Christian and just because you call some people blind doesn't automatically give you vision? I mean, if religion is so great, why has it started so many wars? Why does it build huge churches but fails to feed the poor? Tell single moms God doesn't love them if they've ever had a divorce, but in the Old Testament, God actually calls religious people whores. Religion might preach grace, but another thing they practice, tend to ridicule God's people, they did it to John the Baptist. They can't fix their problems and so they just mask it, not realizing religion's like spraying perfume on a casket. See, the problem with religion is it never gets to the core. It's just behavior modification, like a long list of chores. Like, let's dress up the outside, make it look nice and neat, but it's funny, that's what they used to do to mummies while the corpse rots underneath. Now I ain't judging, I'm just saying, quit putting on a fake look. Because there's a problem if people only know that you're a Christian by your Facebook. I mean, in every other aspect of life, you know that logic's unworthy. It's like saying you play for the Lakers just because you bought a jersey. See, this was me too, but no one seemed to be on to me. Acting like a church kid while addicted to pornography. See, on Sunday I'd go to church, but Saturday getting faded, acting if I was simply created to just have sex and get wasted. See, I spent my whole life building this facade of neatness, but now that I know Jesus, I boast in my weakness. Because if grace is water, then the church should be an ocean. It's not a museum for good people, it's a hospital for the broken. Which means I don't have to hide my failure, I don't have to hide my sin. Because it doesn't depend on me, it depends on Him. See, because when I was God's enemy, and certainly not a fan, He looked down and said, I want that man. Which is why Jesus hated religion and for it he called them fools. Don't you see so much better than just following some rules? Now let me clarify. I love the church, I love the Bible, and yes, I believe in sin. But if Jesus came to your church, would they actually let him in? See, remember he was called a glutton and a drunkard by religious men. But the Son of God never supports self-righteousness, not now, not then. Now back to the point, one thing is vital to mention how Jesus and religion are on opposite spectrums. See, one's the work of God, but one's a man-made invention. See, one is the cure, but the other's the infection. See, because religion says do, Jesus says done. Religion says slave, Jesus says son. Religion puts you in bondage, while Jesus sets you free. Religion makes you blind, but Jesus makes you see. And that's why religion and Jesus are two different clans. Religion is man searching for God, Christianity is God searching for man. 
which is why salvation is freely mine and forgiveness is my own. Not based on my merits, but Jesus' obedience alone. Because he took the crown of thorns and the blood dripped down his face. He took what we all deserve. I guess that's why you call it grace. And while being murdered, he yelled, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Because when he was dangling on that cross, he was thinking of you. And he absorbed all your sin and he buried it in the tomb, which is why I'm kneeling at the cross saying, come on, there's room. So for religion, no, I hate it. In fact, I literally resent it. Because when Jesus said, it is finished, I believe he meant it. Thanks, Matt. Let's finish our time together by singing What a Beautiful Name. This song reminds us of why Jesus came to earth, not to bring religion, but to restore us to our Father God. You are the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. You're here. Beautiful name.
Next week, we'll be looking at the question, what is truth? If you would like to discuss in more depth what we have looked at today, you are welcome to join a midweek discussion group. Please see the details on the screen of who to contact. Have a great week. And God bless.